Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. Have you ever walked beside someone or tried to walk beside someone who was going through a life-altering experience or they've been met with a sudden traumatic occurrence in their life that shifts their whole world and you have no clue what to do? Well, I'm kind of talking about that today. And the title is, He Never Let Go. One night when I was flipping around the TV stations, this is quite a few years ago, because I really don't watch a lot of TV now, I caught the tail end of some sort of medical um, show where in the very last scene, everybody was waiting in a hospital waiting room to find out the news of surgery. Uh, and it looked like a really intense situation. Everybody was huddled together and there was a small girl, maybe seven or eight years old, who was curled up in a chair and people were occasionally looking her way but trying not to draw too much attention to her. Uh, people were sitting right beside her but they were quietly giving her space while they were worried about what was really going on. A doctor walked into the room. By the way, he walked into the room. He knew the news was not going to be good. And indeed, it was not. And one young man rose to the occasion, crouched beside her, close enough that he could hold on to her, and drew her into his arms and told her the bad news. The little girl just hit his chest and pounded and yelled and said, no, it was impossible. And you could just see the trauma. His arms were strong enough to hold her and her rage and her anger and her disbelief and nothing she did, no matter how she flayed from side to side, shifted his core and he was able to carry her through that really traumatic time. As I watched that scene, I was reminded of some people I knew who were in similar situations. One in particular was the young father of five children who lost his wife in a tragic accident. And he had a strong faith at the time. And at that time, when I was watching the show, I felt led to pray for him because taking care of five children, working, and just trying to deal with the loss of his wife was a pretty heavy burden. And I felt the Lord say, you can't carry this one, Catherine. You're not strong enough. Let me carry it. Unfortunately, over the years, this man's pain and grief led him to make some pretty foolish decisions. But I heard through the grapevine that he is doing better now, but the Lord was able to hold him no matter how far this young man wandered. And it reminded me of that Bible passage in Romans, one of my favorite passages of all time. And I'm going to be skipping around, but if you got your Bible, go to Romans chapter 8, verse 35, and then skipping to verse 38 and 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation including ourselves, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is quite able and strong enough to carry your pain. He's quite able and capable enough to hear the burdens of your heart and to hear that pain and the questions you might have. If you're going through 
one of those crises right now. I encourage you to read a modern version of the Psalms. Start at Psalm 1 and just continue to read until something that is written there just hits that sweet spot or that sore spot and speaks to your heart. You need to have a hard discussion with God and tell him just how you feel. Do so. He's probably been waiting for you to come to him with your questions, but try to do so with a heart that is asking questions and not a heart that is trying to accuse God of things. Because when we accuse anyone, it's difficult for us to open our hearts to hear from them in response. Our accusations close our ears from hearing what they have to say.